Stanford Hospital was originally constructed in 1959, but now the new Stanford Hospital is getting an upgrade. Ground broke on May 1st, 2013. It has 368 beds, 28 procedure rooms, and 22 elevators. But I want to touch on some amazing new technology innovation here. This hospital is being built in California. So what does that mean? It needs to hold up in earthquakes. To address this, there are 206 seismic isolators in each that is capable of supporting 2 million tons. This facility also accommodates the latest in medical technology. But I'm going to let an expert tell you all about it. I recently had the opportunity to chat with Bert Hurlbut. He is the Vice President of New Hospital Construction at Stanford Healthcare. So let's take a look at what Bert had to tell me all about. I'm here with Bert Hurlbut, who's the Vice President of New Stanford Hospital Construction. Bert, well, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. So, Good. Bert, now we've talked today about all the amazing things that are going on here, and we've toured this hospital. It's amazing. You have to be pretty excited about what you've accomplished so far. It's, it's been an amazing five years that I've been here. Well, actually six years, but five years of construction. Uh, we started back in 13. We've done probably 52 months of construction now. Probably got another year of hard construction, Then it's all the commissioning, checkout, uh, activation, and to get the patients in the rooms. So we're almost to the end of this journey. What, what has been the most exciting part of this project for you? Oh, uh, the best part is just getting it built. That I tell people when I go to meetings, I get the best job at Stanford. I get to build this, this big hospital. A uh, little bit about the hospital, 368 beds, all single patient rooms. Uh, we've got about 820,000 square feet of facility. There's one floor below grade, seven above grade. We have a helipad on top. We have a level one trauma center. It's the only one between San Francisco and San Jose. So if you're injured or have a heart attack or whatever, anywhere mid-peninsula, you're gonna come to Stanford Hospital. Uh, people ask me, you know, are you gonna get hospital awards or architectural awards for hospitals? And I say, no, we won't. We're gonna get architectural awards. This building is so beautiful that it's gonna, it rivals just just any other beautiful building out there, be it museums or libraries or hotels or whatever. This is one beautiful facility. But let's talk about something I found really interesting, the seismic shift ideas that you have on this building. That to me is interesting for someone like me who lives in Chicago, who doesn't think about the things that you have to think about living here in California. Talk about that because I think people want to find that or will find that interesting from both a building perspective and somebody who might have to come to this hospital. You like that part, that our building moves. It moves. We can move six feet in an earthquake from center, three feet one way, three feet the other way. We have these things called base isolators. They're made by a company called EPS, Earthquake Protection Systems, and they're called a triple friction pendulum system. And they're all steel with uh, kind of a Teflon coating on each of the parts that slide over each other. And the gentleman that invented them is Victor Zayas, and we asked him, what is that material? And he just says, it's Victor's secret sauce. So he won't tell us. Uh, to give you a story about it, before the building started, I had surveyors come out and find the four corners of the facility. So at each corner, I had a easel set up and some renderings of what you would actually see if you went to that corner of the building. And I toured executives through and at each location, I'd say, okay, if you're standing here on entry or you're going to see the ambulance entrance or the emergency entry or you'll see the garden entry, whatever it's going to be. And now I give them a story about construction itself. Uh, a quick one, I said, we got to take 180,000 cubic yards of earth out of the hole to get ready for the facility. And everybody just shrugs their shoulders. I says, well, you probably don't know what that means, but I'll tell you what it means, that we're going to be digging dirt for over six months and it's gonna be a truck coming in, truck going out. And on our best day, we had 450 loads, and there's only 480 work minutes in a work day. It's one truck leaving the site about every 75 seconds, which means one truck comes back every 75 seconds. So when you stood on the corner right out front, something went this way or this way every 35 seconds or so. 
it's a lot of movement of pieces and parts, just getting the dirt out. So at one of the locations, I said, our building's going to be base isolated, and it's going to move six feet in an earthquake. So somebody says, oh, wow, what's that going to feel like? And I went, I don't know. I said, that's a good question. And I thought a minute, I went, it won't feel like anything. The building actually doesn't move. And the building stays still in space, and it's the earth that's moving back and forth during the earthquake underneath the building. So the building actually sits stationary. So if you were in the building looking out, you'd see everything moving back and forth. You'd see cars rocking back and forth. But the building itself will not actually move, although it looks like it's moving six feet in an earthquake. So now you've got this amazing hospital. But now let's talk about the most important thing besides building a beautiful hospital, one that's not going to move when it needs to or shifts when it's supposed to because it's safe. But what about the most important thing, coordinated care? You've got this model for coordinated care so patients have the best advanced technology. That's what you put in this as well because you built all these things in the walls, the best technology there for doctors. Talk about that. The health care that's delivered here at Stanford is some of the best in the world. Just recently, U.S. News & World Report gave Stanford number nine on the honor roll. And that's pretty darn good, considering that Stanford is just not one of the mega hospitals like Mass General or Johns Hopkins. I've been to some of those other hospitals. Those are thousands of beds. Right now, this facility is only 475 beds. We'll move up to about 600 beds. However, the School of Medicine are the folks that actually deliver the care. They're the physicians that go into the patient rooms. And since I've been here for six years, only, six, only been here six years, they've had three Nobel Prize winners named from Stanford University. And they've all been in medicine, which is pretty amazing. So they're coming up with things today that we will see probably in community hospitals in 25 years from now, which will be routine, such as MRIs right now. Everyone has an MRI when you hurt your knee or hurt your shoulder, or whatever. But you know, 20, 30 years ago, that was just obscure. Nobody knew what an MRI was. But now, that's one of the things that will filter down to uh, the general public. Uh, a thing they're doing right now is genetic profiling. They're running your genome. You can run your genome now for maybe five thousand dollars. In the genome, there's some markers, and it will tell you if you've got a propensity for uh, muscular dystrophy or uh, some uh, dementia or just something in the future and they'll tell you you know you've got to watch out for this this is what we can do to prevent it or just watch out where do you see the future of construction healthcare where do you see it all going the future that's a very good question that my crystal ball is a little bit cloudy right now but with this uh, the Medicare and the Obamacare we're seeing a lot of it becoming outpatient, as you've seen in, back in Chicago, here, everywhere. It's a lot of outpatient. However, people are going to get sicker than they can just handle in outpatient settings. And this, this place is one of the few across America, right now in the top ten, that if you're really, really sick, you've got to come to a place like this or Johns Hopkins, uh, Cleveland Clinic, UCLA, UCSF, or one of those. And, this is one of the models for one of those type facilities. Going forward, if you had to say one ending thought, what would you want everyone to know about what Stanford Healthcare is all about now, the new hospital? We're building a beautiful facility, but it's what's going to be done inside that facility, that it's the caregivers that are working tirelessly to make sure that the patient's experience when he's here is just the best they could ever imagine. Uh, years ago, I don't think it was that way at Stanford, that the doctors just thought that they were ruled the roost and just thought they were the best and what they said had to go. And it's not that way now. Stanford is a very patient-friendly place. It's a wonderful place. If you've got to get treated, this is the place to go, bar none. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Some pretty cool stuff, right? Well, that's not all. Chad Reeder with New Stanford Hospital and Greg Schoonover with the Clark McCarthy team also took us on this amazing hospital tour. So join me next week as I journey from the Hellestop to the operating room. I will take you inside this amazing new Stanford Hospital. But for this week, 
that's someone you should know, or maybe I should say, that's something you should know.